Uh, studies, in fact, have shown that many times patients remain at high A1C for two to three years before a change is made in the regimen. And that's what we call a clinical inertia. So, so as providers, sometimes we sit on high A1C. We don't do anything about it. Why? Because of many factors. Patients can sometimes bargain with us and say, there were holidays, had a wedding, my diet was not good, please give me a chance. We give them a chance. They come back, there's something else. Or we get too busy with the way healthcare is. Providers have to see more patients. There's less time to spend with each patient. Patients may not always attend uh, diabetes education classes. So studies have shown that many providers may just sit, not be proactive, with A1Cs which are high for years before something is done. And that's why patients sometimes end up with high A1Cs for long time with changes made slowly over time, and that's including insulin. So even when insulin is added, A1C may not always come down to go right away because some patients could be severely insulin resistant and they might need changes and adjustments and these can be made so slowly that it may take years for that to happen. And that inertia is something we have to fight in practice and make really changes. I think what you have to understand about type 2 diabetes is that it's a progressive disease. So over time, patients are going to need to have their therapies progress. So, you know, today we might be on just metformin. Um, there might be some other oral agents. But eventually, probably 80% of all our patients will need insulin. So you can start insulin at the beginning of the career of diabetes or somewhere along the way, but they're going to need insulin. And what happens is it's not started. A1Cs are left to go too high. It's put off too long. Um, and the healthcare provider, as well as the patient, is not comfortable necessarily starting insulin. And so patients are left with A1Cs that are too high, and that's too bad, because what we know is that those patients are the ones that are going to have complications. Then when patients are started on insulin, we always say, go low, go slow, because we don't want to cause hypoglycemia. We want the patient to adjust, but it's also important to uptitrate the insulin. And the patients can do that themselves. The patients can change the dose and titrate the dose. We just need to teach them how to do that. So if I start someone on, say, a basal insulin of 10 units, I don't want them to come back in three months and still be on 10 units. So either I need to teach them how to titrate or I need to titrate, but it's important. And so it's time consuming and you have to feel comfortable with insulin. So I think those are the things that we need to be out in the community teaching people is how to use insulin, when to start it, the importance of not letting A1Cs run too high, and the fact that patients can titrate their own insulin.